Hello speaker peeps. So a couple of weeks ago I made a video about how I made these speakers, my bamboo DML panels. And I did have a couple of comments saying, hey, that looks cool, but how about some measurements to back it up, basically. So here we are today. I have my tiny uh, calibrated measurement microphone, and I'm going to make some frequency response measurements of the panels. So this is the amp I used to drive these panels. It's a late 90s Pioneer integrated solid state black, very 90s looking thing. Nothing to get too excited about. Obviously for the purpose of measuring, I want to remove any sort of sources of equalization or anything like that. So here in the tape loop is my mini DSP processor. So that's off. Um, Loudness control usually stays on because I often listen at low volume. Uh, but for today, I'm just going to go direct. So this skips the preamp section altogether. Signal is just going to come out of my laptop into the power amp section and uh, straight through to the panels. Oh, wait. Turn off the subwoofer as well. Firstly, I've said it before, but it's worth repeating. I'm just learning all of this stuff as I go. So this is hardly going to be a scientific study of speaker behavior. I'll also note that I took these measurements in my living room, which doesn't have any sound treatment to speak of. So no doubt my results are affected by the room itself. I originally tried gating the one meter test using the impulse response window, but it seemed to mess with the bass frequencies a lot, and since I don't really know what I'm doing, uh, I just set it everything back to default, and that's just how I'm going to present it here. So if anyone can point me in the direction of some good learning material for how to take these measurements better, please let me know and I'll give it another go for anyone who's interested. Here are the five measurements that I've taken. I measured each panel at one meter distance and then again close in at four centimeters distance. The first panel has a single exciter placed on the two fifth position, while the second panel has an exciter at two fifths and then another one at the dead center position. I've seen other people use this setup and I wanted to see how it compared with just a single exciter. The other measurement here is of my conventional floor standing speakers. These are a pair of Richter Jaguar speakers from the late 90s. That's an Australian brand that makes a decent quality gear, but probably not what you'd call audiophile. I think these are around a thousand bucks or $1,500 new. They have a pair of eight inch woofers and a dome tweeter. And overall, I, I like how they sound. For the sake of clarity, I will add smoothing to the graph as well. Um, just to make it a little bit easier to to read i know that might not be the, technically the best way to do it but i'm not sure how else i can actually show these two to you on youtube so one twelfth of an octave of smoothing is what we have so anyway this is what we've got to work with so i'll just start with the richters Okay, this is my floor standing speakers. You can see from the low end, they start to show a bit of life at around 40 hertz there. But really, they, they start to make decent noise uh, up here at around 70. There's a pretty big dip here between like 150 to 220 hertz and then after that, they are pretty consistent all the way from, call it 300 hertz up to 20 kilohertz. Uh, I say it's consistent because it's all basically forms a, a straight line through here, but obviously there are still these peaks and troughs. From the top of the, the highest peak, uh, you can see that's 99 decibels. To the bottom of the lowest trough, well, 20 kilohertz, that's 89. So around about a 10 
decibel variation if you exclude the, the bass frequencies. That actually doesn't sound very good, like that's more than 10%. So I, I assume that, the, as I said, the room's affecting this measurement. Um, to what extent, I really don't know. Now, if I add in the single exciter panel at one meter to compare these measurements, uh, a couple of things are noticeable. So the overall shape is like broadly similar, including the, the big peak here at uh, like 100, 115 or 100, 100 hertz up to 120 hertz. I guess this could be a room mode in action. Uh, I'm not particularly knowledgeable, but I know that that's supposed to affect base frequencies. So maybe that's what I'm looking at there. I'll be interested to see if the near field measurements also show this. Uh, going up again, it's all pretty similar through here, but you can see the panel is generally just a bit weaker from like two kilohertz and up. Uh, we've got a couple of decent dips here and the sort of overall trend is, is down. It's well below the, the line of the Richters. I'm not surprised by that because the floor standers actually have a tweeter, which of course is dedicated to, to filling in those high frequencies. What is a bit weird is this, this big peak at 11 kilohertz on the exciter. Um, maybe that's just a property of the, of the model of exciter that I have, I'm not sure, but uh, it's a good four decibels higher than the than what the tweeter is putting out. Then obviously it drops off pretty hard and really you don't get much below about 15 kilohertz. That actually doesn't bother me too much. I'm not sure if my ears can actually hear above 15 kilohertz. So not so much of an issue. So now I'll just remove the, the Richter floor standers and I will include the two exciter panel to compare with the single. So this orange line is the two, two driver panel. And you can see once again, the overall shape is, is fairly similar, including the, uh, the peak at 120-ish hertz, and including the big peak here at at 11 kilohertz, so not too much difference. But this one does does have some dips, you know, where the single exciter has peaks. And this one's also a bit smoother in some regions like here from 600 to 1000 hertz, where the single exciter panel has a couple of big dips here but the the two exciter ones pretty in fact it's very smooth it's the smoothest part of the whole range there i guess that the the two drivers here are sort of filling each other in any gaps in the frequency response in that range um, that would be my guess on the other hand you've got like this big peak here 550 hertz in the two exciter where the single exciter one's relatively smooth through here so overall it's a bit of a wash isn't it although if i just play with the smoothing a bit if i make these really smooth curves you can see that the orange two exciter line doesn't do much for the base it has quite a bit more through the whole mid range. So this is 400 Hertz to 2.2 kilohertz, more all through that range. And then it drops off and it actually has less in the upper range here. So overall that looks to me like it's less balanced over the whole range. Now, if I move on, I will compare the one exciter panel at a meter to the one exciter panel at four centimeters, so the near field measurement. The most notable difference here is obviously the base. 
the near field looks pretty good, uh, pretty smooth or consistent at least, down to this kind of 40 to 50 hertz kind of range where the the one meter measurements dropping off, you know, pretty hard below 115 hertz. So there's definitely seems to be a more rounded base in that in that near measurement. So what I think maybe is that there's a lot of room mode kind of stuff going on in these low frequencies and, and there's a lot of cancellation that's that's holding this one down. You obviously don't get that in the near field because you're right up against the speaker and you're not getting any reflections really. Hopefully someone more knowledgeable can can jump in and comment here and tell me if that's if that's right. The other thing that, that I can't explain is here at this nine kilohertz frequency where there's just a huge dip in the near field and the uh, the one meter measurement just doesn't have that dip at all. Can't explain that. It's the same panel. It's the same driver. Uh, don't know. Question out there to the YouTube universe. What the hell's going on? I'll get rid of the one meter measurement now and we'll just compare the two different panels in the near field. So the the blue line is the two exciter and the green line is still the single exciter, both measured at four centimeters. So just quickly again, you can see the, the base is basically the same here. The peaks and troughs are shifted a little bit. Um, that's not a surprise at all. Again, there's a few regions where the two exciter you know, is, is peaking while the, the single is troughing um, here as well and over here. Yeah, that's it for this kind of quick and dirty comparison. In summary, I guess I've got two takeaways from this and that's that the elite, as I said, the frequency response point of view, there's not really much reason to use two exciters over a single one, at least if you want to use this two fifths and center positions. And to be fair, I haven't seen this positioning recommended by any manufacturers, but I have seen people using it uh, online. So maybe that's not the best way to go. I'll definitely be experimenting with different positioning of multi exciters in the future. And hopefully, you know, the, the goal there is to get a smoother overall response with without any kind of big cancellations. It may be that it needs more than two uh, placed strategically around the panel where each one can sort of pick up some of the slack from the other, you know. Exciter A might be reinforcing Exciter C while B and C are cancelling each other out and, you know, so forth to try and get an overall smooth response. The second takeaway is that the frequency response of my panels, even the single exciter panel, it still isn't as smooth as what comes out of the mid-range floor standing speakers. Where are they? There. The Richters put out more in the low end and they have a smoother treble. So based on this metric alone, you'd have to say that they're a better speaker and they probably are if you're not the type to mess around with weird kind of concepts like DML, but that's not why we're here, is it? What you can't see in the graphs is that the bamboo panels have this certain sweetness to them along with a huge kind of sound stage and, and wide dispersion characteristic and those are the things that I really love about them. So for now my plan is to work on the frequency response to see if I can smooth that out to match the conventional speakers while not losing any of that DML magic. Uh, again, please hit me up if you have any suggestions or ways that I can improve my measurements because as I said, this is all pretty new to me. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. Feel free to subscribe if you want to see more of this DML journey.